Deuteronomy chapter 5 and verse 26, the Bible says, For who is there of all flesh that hath learned the voice of the living God, heard the voice of the living God speaking out of the midst of the fire, as we have and lived? Go thou near and hear all that the Lord our God shall say. And speak thou unto us all that the Lord our God shall speak unto thee. And we will hear it and do it. And the Lord heard the voice of your words. When ye spake unto me, and the Lord spake unto me, I have heard the voice of the words of this people, which they have spoken unto thee. They have well said all that they have spoken. Oh, that there were such an heart in them, that they would fear me, and keep all my commandments always, that it might be well with them, and with their children forever. This morning, I want to speak on the subject of God's plea for parents. God's plea for parents. Father, I ask you for, for help as I preach. Give me wisdom and discernment and your power. Give me clarity of thought and of speech. And God, I pray that you'd speak to each person's heart this morning. Uh, would, no matter where they sit and what stage of life, uh, whether they're a parent, whether they're a mother or father or not, uh, you have something for all of us with this text and with this thought with this message, I pray that you speak to us all. And may your hand of blessing and your help and power be upon me. And may I be completely yielded to and controlled by you. Help me, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> D.L. Moody, a uh, famed evangelist from the 1800s, was known for bringing um, hundreds of thousands of people uh, to Jesus Christ and salvation. Um, he made this statement uh, about reaching children for Jesus, and I thought it was helpful. Um, he said, Moody said, when I was a superintendent on the north side and laboring among the children and trying to get parents interested to save their children, I used to think that if I ever did become a preacher, I would have, have, I would have but one text and one sermon. And that should be addressed to parents. Because when we get them interested, their interest will be apparent in the children. We used to say that if we get the lambs in, the old sheep will follow. But I didn't, I didn't find that to be the case. When we got the children interested one Sunday, the parents would be sometimes pulling the other way all week. And before Sunday came again, the impression that had been made was gone. I think most people would probably agree with Moody. When I was about 13 years old, I started working in the bus ministry. Um, so for over 20 years now, working with children's ministries, primarily that ministry for a long time, I saw that we would try to, the idea was we would try to reach children for the Lord, see them saved, and hopefully the parents would, because out of love for their children uh, and their interests, would come to church. Sometimes that worked. Um, that's partly how my, my family came, came to, the, to church and things like that, through my brother and I getting saved. Um, so we, in some ways, we'd kind of be part of the, kind of the opposite of what Moody said. But the vast majority of the time, what Moody said was true. Um, you've heard me say it's, and I don't know where I got it from, but it's hard to resurrect in church what has been put to death in the home. <laughs> it's hard to clean up a mess on Sunday that's been made all week. It's hard to, it's with bus, bus ministry and things like that, you know, it's kind of like parents that say, well, I don't know why my kids messed up. We had them in church, right? You had them in church for two or three hours a week, but you had them, you know, the other 21 or however many, you know, 21 hours a day, whatever it would be. That's not good math, but you get the point. <laughs> but, you know, it's what families need are, are godly mom and dad that will lead them, that will guide them to the Lord and will love the Lord with all their hearts. Not just tell them what to do, but will love, that's part of it, but will lead their family to do what's right because that's what's in their heart. Obviously, not just aiming at us, but that's true in most homes today. Uh, even in many Christian homes, that's missing. Um, it's rare to find a dad that will love the Lord with all his heart and will lead his family to do what's right. Most men are too busy to be spiritual. Most men, um, they do need to provide for their family, and that is a God-given responsibility. But because of that, that's often because they, they spend their life focusing on providing financially for their family's care. They don't have time for their emotional or spiritual care for their families. Uh, America is in need of godly men that will influence their wives and their children for the Lord. And that is, all, that is now and always has been God's desire for each home to have a godly man and leader to lead their home in the right way. 
In the book of Deuteronomy, God deals with this a little bit in this chapter. Uh, the generation of men and women that made it through the 40 years of wilderness wanderings, they've, they're about to go into the promised land. Um, we've mentioned this, in fact, we've mentioned this chapter on Wednesdays a lot lately because we're dealing with the Ten Commandments. And in Deuteronomy 5, the Ten Commandments are given again to the second generation before they go into the promised land. But um, he gives them, the, he retells the Ten Commandments. He begins to tell them more of the law um, just to prepare them for their own personal lives, the generation that lived through the wilderness wanderings. But before this second generation enters the promised land, God reminds them of what God has for them. Verses 6 through 21, we find that. But then He reminds them of the commands, not only that He's about to give them, but what He's already given them. But on the day they heard the law of God being given, at least the Ten Commandments, we find their response, and Moses is the one speaking here, and Moses... Um, uh, Moses is reminding them not just of how they responded, but how their daddies responded and parents responded years ago. Um, let's look at this and again. Uh, in verse, back up to verse 24. So after the law was given the first time in Exodus, Moses is telling them, this is what you did and what your fathers did. Verse 24, And ye said, Behold, the Lord our God has showed us His glory and His greatness. Remember in Exodus, if you've been here at least on Wednesdays, maybe you know it anyways, when the law was first given, they stood below the mountain and Moses went up into the mountain. They weren't allowed to go, they weren't allowed to touch it. There's the fire and the smoke and things like that coming from the mountain where God was speaking. And he says that they heard the Lord speak. They, God has showed us his glory and his greatness. We have heard his voice out of the midst of the fire. We have seen this day that God doth talk with man and he liveth. That was a scary thing for them to hear God's voice. They respected God. They were scared when they heard God's voice that something bad was about to happen to them. Now, therefore, verse 25, now, therefore, why should we die? For this great fire will consume us. If we hear the voice of the Lord our God any more, then we shall die. They were wrong. You, should, you don't have to be afraid of the Lord's voice when you're right with God. So that's kind of indicative of where they were. Verse 26, for who is there of all flesh? that hath heard the voice of the living God speaking out of the midst of the fire as we have and lived, go thou near and hear all that the Lord our God shall say. So Israel says to Moses, go back to God and tell us what we need to hear from Him. Go thou near and hear all that the Lord our God shall say, and speak thou unto us all that the Lord our God shall speak unto thee, and we will hear it and do it. So what was their attitude like? We're scared of God. Moses, whatever you tell us, God said, we will do it. And the Lord heard the voice of your words when he spake unto me. And the, Lord spake, and the Lord spake unto me, I have heard the voice of the words of this people, which they have spoken unto thee. They have well said all that they have spoken. Time out for just a second. Remember what happened in Exodus? God gave the law. He gave them the Ten Commandments. But before Moses could finish getting the Ten Commandments, Israel was already committing idolatry. Moses, whatever God says, we'll do it. That didn't stick around very long. I think they were sincere when they said it, but they didn't, something didn't stick. There was a lack of depth, a lack of, lack of, to some extent, extent, there was a lack of sincerity. In verse 29, I was reading, when I was just reading through this the other day, some words I try to pay attention to. That first word, first letter in verse 29, oh, that's a passion word. And it's not Moses speaking and Moses begging to God, it's God pleading. Oh, that there was such a heart in them. Listen to God. Oh, that there was such a heart in them that they would fear me and keep all my commandments always that it might be well with them and with their children forever. Do you hear God's tone? Do you hear God's care? Mo or God is pleading on behalf of His own people. God is begging and just pouring out His heart. I wish my people felt that way. I wish that the people that just said they fear me, I wish the people that, that just said they would obey me, I wish that they would. That it might be well with them and with their children forever. In our text, we see God's heart for His people and His yearning for them just to do right. 
We're going to go backwards through this verse this morning, and I want to show you three things, um, and hopefully it'll, it'll help us this morning. And I will tell you, the whole point of it is to be impactful, <laughs> um, so you'll kind of get that tone. <laughs> Number, let's look at the end of the verse. The last two phrases, that it might be well with them and with their children forever. Number one, I want to talk about the power of a parent. Oh, and by the way, time out for just a second. The main, with it being Father's Day, just to be honest, the main point of the message is to aim at parents, but primarily fathers. But when you read this, it wasn't just him aiming at daddies, and not just parents. It dealt with all of Israel. And the truth is, though we're going to deal with parents, how adults lead and how adult believers lead will influence a nation, not just parents in the home, but you make a difference with your generation. It's, it's not just in your home, that's your primary, primary ministry, but if men, if people will stand for God and do what's right, it will not only affect their home, and it will, but it will affect other people around you. So if you think, Pastor, I'm not a dad, I'm not a mom, I'm not a parent, uh, my, my children are grown, it abso- this absolutely applies to every person. Just allow the Lord to speak to your heart. But number one, the power of a parent, that it may be well with them and with their children forever. It's God's desire here, the things that your life, the things would be well with you and with their children forever. Some people take this a little bit, take it and miss a step. God's purpose is not just, God's entire purpose for your life is not just for you to move from where you are to happy. So whatever you do, you should, get, people think that the, whatever you should do, as long as it makes me happy, then obviously I'm making God happy. So if I'm happy, God's happy. That's, that's not the truth. God does want you to be happy and joyful, but God wants you to aim at pleasing Him. And if you please Him, things will be well with you. You put God first, and God take care of the well with you and the happy. You don't aim at happy, you aim at God. Does that make sense? But people miss the God part of, part of that. That's, he's slightly important, isn't he? But it's God's desire that your life, that things will be well with you and with your children forever. Jesus said this, we know in John 10.10. 10. Jesus says, I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. There's an order in that verse. There's life, and then there's abundant life. But he wasn't just giving people the ability to exist on this earth and be born and then to live, you know, 70, 80, 90 years, and that's it. But Jesus came to give people eternal life, and if they have eternal life, then they can have abundant life. Those things are the abundant life is entirely dependent on your relationship with God and whether or not you have eternal life and you're saved, right? Right, right. So the purpose of Jesus coming is that you would have life, that you would have eternal life through Jesus Christ, which comes as a result of you understanding your guilt for all of sin and comes short of the glory of God. You have to understand that you are a lost sinner in need of salvation before you will ever go to Jesus for salvation. That just makes sense, right? Why would I stand here and ask someone to throw me a life vest to keep me from drowning? Because I don't, I'm not, right? You have to understand your need for salvation, So Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost, right, because of their sins. So Jesus came to provide salvation and forgiveness, and He did that by dying on a cross, by being your sacrifice, by being um, the person that would take your sin debt, that would take the punishment that you deserve. So Jesus died in your place, He rose again, and He offers salvation, He offers life, if you will simply put your faith in Jesus to forgive you and to be your Savior. So turning to Jesus Christ, trusting Him, and putting your faith in Him, you're saved. By believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. You're no longer lost in your sin. You're no longer guilty because of your sin. You're no longer on your way to hell because of your sin. Your sins are forgiven. They're gone because Jesus died for them and he's forgiven you. That's the life. But Jesus came to give you life and life more abundantly. Jesus wants you to have a joyful life, a full life, a purposeful life, God wants people to know Him as their Savior, and as a result, have Jesus as the Lord and master their life. God wants people to live a blessed life. God wants people to have a life surrendered to His Lordship and fulfilling His purpose for them, and there's joy in that. But whether or not things would be well with them and with their children was entirely connected to their obedience to the Lord. We'll get to that in more detail in a few minutes. But I want you to notice one primary word at the end of verse 29. Let me read the phrase again, and I want you to, I want you to, technically in the Bible, there's, it's two words, but read for, when we get there, read out loud those last two words put together. 
that it might be well with them and with their children. How long? How long can those parents and those adults impact their children? Forever. What impact does it make? And forever impact. You and your life impacts other people's forever. I know that that's not right, but I'm going to say it that way anyways because I want to and I get to. But that it might be well with them and with their children forever. There is a forever. That's clear. The Bible is very clear on that. There is an eternity. There is a forever. Hebrews 9.27, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. You die and then there's something after this. There's a day you meet God. Each person will stand before God and give an account for their lives. And those who died without knowing Jesus as Savior will be in hell forever. Those who don't know Christ will be forever in hell. The Bible says in 2 Thessalonians 1, verses 7 through 9, it says, And to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with His mighty angels, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His power. Again and again and again, God makes it clear that there is everlasting eternal punishment for those that simply do not know God. He mentions obeying the gospel. Obeying the gospel simply is hearing the gospel, the command to turn to Christ, to repent, and trusting Jesus as your Savior. If someone does not get saved, they do not put their faith in Jesus for salvation, they're disobeying the gospel. That's bad news. Those that that die without knowing God will endure everlasting destruction. But Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. There is life in heaven. There is a forever in heaven for everyone that has had their sins forgiven, that have accepted God's gift of eternal life. But you as a parent have the ability, and this is what I want us to get with the power of the parent. You as a parent, have the, you have the power to influence your child's forever. How you live affects their eternity. Now, every person must make their own decision. Just because you're saved doesn't mean they'll get saved, and just because you're lost doesn't guarantee they'll stay lost. But you impact them. Your influence makes a difference. I read the story of a, of a mom. This is in mid-1800s, around the Civil War time. But she was... Um, the preacher was doing everything he could to win this boy to Christ. And he heard the gospel, wanted to get saved, and the mom tried to talk him out of it. She said that her son, she said her son was a good boy and didn't need to be saved. The preacher pleaded with her and with the boy, but she wouldn't change her mind and wouldn't leave him alone. The preacher, he tried to reach the boy, but he was pulling towards as, as the preacher was pulling him towards the Lord, the mom was pulling him away from the Lord, and guess who had the most influence? Mama. Years later, um, that preacher, he was visiting a jail nearby, and that young man was there. Go figure. But the preacher saw him, and he asked, started talking with him because he recognized him. He said, how did you get here? He answered him, how, does your mom know where you are? No. So I told my mom that I was joining the military. And she, she thinks I'm in the army. And for four years now, that mom mourned over her son, thinking that he had died in battle, when in fact he had messed up and ended up in prison. What could have been if the mom just allowed the boy to get saved, allowed him to hear the truth, allowed him to have God in his life? What pain could have avoided in both their lives? But your life, your teaching will influence your children. Your consistency or lack of consistency will influence your children. Your heart for the things of God, your care about the things of God will influence your children. You will influence them for not just for years, but for forever. You have great power. So we find the power of a parent. Number two, we find prerequisites for the parent. Oh, that there was such an heart of them, the what? That they would fear me and keep all my commandments always. And the result of that, that it may be well with them and with their children forever. 
He gives two things, two areas where he wants parents to do right, adults to do right. And he says, he says, this is how things can be well with them and with their children forever. Do you want that? Do you want your life to be blessed of God? Anybody? Do you want your children's life to be blessed of God? And by the way, not just your children's life, but to have an influence on their life so that when they die, they'll go to heaven. Do you want to have that kind of impact? Well, God tells you how. He tells us exactly how. That, it, that they would fear me and keep my commandments always. That they would fear me and keep all my commandments always. He gives two big things. Number one, your attitude toward the Lord. Number two, your actions for the Lord. Your attitude towards the Lord says that they would fear me. That they would fear God. It's interesting, verse 25, it showed that they were scared of God. They were afraid that God would kill them or punish them, but they, weren't, they didn't have a respect of God. There was something missing from their fear, partly because I don't think they had a right view of God. If you understand, there's a lot of verses in the Bible about the fear of the Lord. And by the way, the word fear does mean fear. Like, sometimes it means to be afraid of. There is a sense of honor and respect, but fear does mean fear. But if we have the right view of that, that thought, the fear of who? The Lord, right. If we understand our God, it changes the attitude of the fear. I don't know if this makes sense to you, but if we understand not only God's righteousness and God's holiness and His ability to punish and, his, and his, the capability and the promise to punish sin, we understand that if we left God alone, with, and only, if we only understood that alone about God and how He punishes sin, then yes, it would create a fear like they had. God's going to kill us just because we hear His voice. But if we understood His love for us and His care for us and His long-suffering and His grace and His mercy, and we, put, and we understand God for who He is, it affects our fear of Him. We don't have to just be afraid He's going to bop us on the head and kill us. When we understand God loves us and everything He does is for our good, it affects our fear to where it's not, yes, there's a fear, afraid fear, but there's also an awe and respect and love and care about Him. When we understand not just the fear, but the fear of the Lord. They had a fear, but they didn't understand the Lord. But God wants them and wants us to fear Him, to understand who He is, to understand His glory, to understand His greatness. But God took His commandments seriously. He took His purity seriously. He took how they viewed Him seriously. He took punishment seriously. And people ought to fear God who has all the power and all authority. Jesus said it this way in Matthew 10. Matthew 10, 28, Jesus said, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear Him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. I think the point is God is dealing with us how we view God. I think many people don't fear God because they don't, they, don't, they don't think of His punishment and His righteousness and His holiness. And they only deal with the love and patience. They, they leave out the righteous part and they only deal with the love. And so they think of God as a passive God who does not care and is not interested. By the way, if God does not care and is not interested, that's not love. People treat God like He doesn't care one bit about what you do or what you're going through or what you do for Him or don't do for Him. God cares about all those things. God's not passive. God is not indifferent. When we know God and His judgment, but also His patience and His kindness, we know how to fear Him. We respect Him. We care about how we treat Him. We care about when we grieve Him. We care about when we let Him down. We fear, we fear offending Him. We fear hurting our God. When we grieve Him, that hurts God. You can hurt God, and we do. Oh, that there was such a heart in them that they would fear me and keep all my commandments always. What commandments? Keep all my commandments. God wanted His people to obey all of them. They said earlier, Moses, we will hear and we will do it. We will do everything you say. They never did, really. But God wants them to and He expects them to. Which commands? The big commands, they're important. The least commands. Jesus deals with that as well, dealing with the least commandments. But we have to obey all of the commandments, the big ones, the, the seemingly big ones, the seemingly least ones, the, the difficult ones, the easy ones, doesn't matter. God expects us to obey all of the commandments, even the inconvenient ones. But then when? To keep all my commandments. What's the next word? Always. There's that consistency again. God wants you to be faithful. 
you know what makes your kids go a little bit crazy? You know what makes my kids go a little bit crazy sometimes? When I'm inconsistent. When everything's good and then you just snap, that's inconsistent. When you have a rule, we're going to live this way, and then you go off on it, you're inconsistent. Inconsistency is very difficult to deal with. You know that with, if you have a boss that's that way or a spouse that's that way, it's difficult. It's, it's harmful. When we are not consistent, then no one knows what to expect. We do well, then we don't. Be faithful. Your life for God should be keeping all of His commandments always. Go, to, go with me to Proverbs, please. Proverbs. I'm going to have to move along more quickly. Proverbs chapter number 2. Solomon speaking to his son in Proverbs. Proverbs 2 in verse number 1. I, by the way, I think, I believe personally, there's varying opinions on this. I think when Solomon was giving this, his son at least was an adult. Just dealing with sexual things and dealing with alcohol and stuff like that. It makes sense for him to be dealing with an adult, right? So his grown son, my son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge and liftest up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. I want to fear God. I want to have a right view of God, a right respect of God. And I want to have the knowledge of God. I want to know God's will. I want to know God's purpose. And I want to know Him personally, right? Don't you? Don't you desire that? You want to truly know God in a right and deep and personal way? He says you can have that. Let me go through this quickly. If thou wilt receive my words. So listen to what I'm teaching. You know Proverbs is um, the words of God, but here it's Solomon is, is the human penman. If you'll listen to the biblical right teaching of mine, if thou receive my words, listen to them and submit to them, and hide my commandments with thee. If you'll take the word of God that I'm teaching you, the Bible principles, the good godly principles that I'm teaching you, not only learn them, by the way, again, he's speaking to an adult, so you can take this as someone speaking to you as an adult. Listen to the word of God, put it in your heart, not just in your head, but in your heart. So thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding, meaning you'll not only hear it, not only will it be in your heart, but you will decide to do it. <coughs> yea, if thou criest after knowledge and liftest up thy voice for understanding. How bad do you want to know God? How bad do you want to know the truth? How bad do you want to grow? You want to know why I don't grow sometimes? Because I don't ask God to help me grow. I'm kind of passive sometimes. We all can be. If the Lord wants to teach me something, I guess I'll have to. I'll come to church. We'll see if I get something or just a complete thoughtlessness about it. If thou seekest her as silver, that's valuable. If thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. You can have everything you need to live for Christ. It's available. You've got to care. You've got to pursue it. But your attitude of fearing God and actions of obeying God will make a difference in your children, in the children in our generation. Oh, that there was such an heart in them that, that they would fear me and keep all my commandments always that it might be well with them and with their children forever. Let me show you one more thing quickly. We showed the power of parents forgot the P word, the prerequisites for parents. <laughs> and finally, God's plea for parents. God begins with the heart of the issue. Oh, that there were such an heart in them. Why didn't they fear God? Their heart wasn't in it. Why didn't they obey God? Because the heart wasn't in it. Do you know what God is always after? Your heart. Not just your rigid obedience, although God wants that, not just, just doing. God wants your heart. If God has your heart, you'll be obedient. You'll fear Him. 
But God deals with the issue. Why did Israel not listen to the commandments of God? Because they didn't have that kind of heart that God desires. Why don't we always honor God? Why don't we always fear God? Why don't we always do exactly what God says? Because in our heart, we really don't want to. In our heart, we don't really don't care. And it's not really about the things that our heart is on. It's who. Does God have your heart? That's the problem. When I'm not what I should be, it's because it's in that moment God does not have my heart. That's all of our problems. It's always a heart problem. God, God hears them. God hears them speak, and God hears them say, Moses, whatever you tell us to do, we'll do it. Oh, there's such a heart in them. They're saying it, but I wish that was their heart. Oh, there's such a heart in them. How is your heart right now towards God? Do you love Him? People might get a little bit of a tighter, awkward feeling about this, but do you, like, do you really love God? Do you have a personal, close relationship with God? You ought to. God wants to have that with you. And it's not a romantic love, but God wants you to have a true love relationship with God. Like you want to spend time with Him. Like you want to please Him. You want to make Him happy. You want to show Him honor and respect because you love Him. It's not a religion. It's a relationship with Christ. How do you feel about God? Oh, there's such a heart in them. God's plea for parents begins with your heart. If you have a heart for God, that will affect your attitude towards God. It will affect your actions towards God, and it will definitely affect your children's forever.